Hi folks, this is Gabe at security.org here to bring you a brand new VPN review. And today's VPN shares the same name as my childhood favorite car, Viper. So today we're taking out Viper VPN and you know how it goes. We're gonna break it all down for you, give you all the details. And if you'd like to see our comprehensive written review, you can check that out at security.org. All right, so let's kick off today by going over what we liked about Viper VPN. And we like the fact that it has over 700 servers in 70 countries. So I didn't feel as if I was really missing out geographically speaking when it comes to, you know, getting past things and things of that nature all available to me. It also has its own proprietary DNS. So Viper DNS, uh, make sure things don't leak. And finally, I love the fact that it has its own proprietary protocol called Chameleon, which really helps in anti-censorship efforts. Now, what didn't we like about Viper VPN? Well, we didn't love the fact that it only allows for five simultaneous connections. I mean, I'm simultaneously connected to five things just right now while I'm filming this video. Uh, so we would have liked to have more options in that sense. And another thing is that it doesn't offer everything you'd hope um, for iOS. So if you're an iPhone user, like I am, sorry, guilty in that respect, um, you cannot split tunnel and it doesn't also have that kill switch functionality, uh, something we would have loved to see um, for you know those of us who are on iPhone. All right, now I wanna talk about what Viper VPN can do at a high level and how well it does it. So you're probably using a VPN because you are essentially trying to mask your location, maybe mask your IP address, and VPNs can help you do that. That's that virtual private network. So in a sense, um, you are going to be able to confuse or, or really hide or disguise uh, your location. So you may, for example, uh, want to be like I am in New York, but actually look like you're coming from Brazil. Regardless of what you are using it for, this is one of the primary elements of using a VPN. Now, specifically with a Viper VPN, they have a number of features that help you in this endeavor of masking your identity. Uh, to begin with, they do have, as we said before, over 700 servers in 70 countries. So you can basically pick where you'd like to be a citizen of each day. I mean, that's a ton of countries, a ton of different servers, because sometimes you may want a different city uh, inside of the single country. Me in New York, maybe I want to be in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, additionally, it has its own proprietary protocol called Chameleon. Uh, and Chameleon is specifically built to help you in anti-censorship efforts. So there have been a number of countries that I've been in uh, where the government does not allow you to see uh, certain things. Uh, you don't have access to every news site. You don't have access to every source of information. And it's really useful to be able to bypass that. And Chameleon is built simply for that. Now, additionally, we do not want leaks and Viper has its own Viper DNS to ensure that you're staying safe. And finally, you don't want something to happen between your connection and then all of a sudden everything is out uh, on the internet. And in that sense, you have both kill switch options and you have split tunneling. So kill switch, of course, ensures that nothing is gonna be leaked. Uh, if something happens, you're completely cut off from the internet. And split tunneling allows you to take some things through the public path, maintain that nice speed that you're used to, and some things through that private, that virtual private network, uh, which could, in some senses, slow down that information. Regarding performance with Vive VPN, the speeds for me were generally solid, but I do wanna point out there's so many different factors that go into your speed, uh, depending on location and proximity. So to some extent, this is somewhat anecdotal. First, our team tested by VPN on an iMac, but before we did that, we did use a control test, so no VPN, and we were able to get a speed of 457 megabytes per second. Now, when it came to connecting to the fastest server at the time, we got 436 megabytes per second in Seattle and 17 megabytes per second upload. Now, traveling really far south down to Argentina, we got to 323 megabytes per second download and 16 megabytes per second upload. Finally, we went east to Portugal where we got 272 megabytes per second download and 15 megabytes per second upload. So you'll note that we did have somewhat of a drop off depending on where we were, it was highly variable, but generally speaking, it was fast enough for our purposes. Now I wanted to do the same type of testing on my iPhone here in New York and I had to start with that control. So with no VPN, I was able to get 67 megabytes per second download and 32 megabytes per second upload. Now in Argentina, I was able to get 26 megabytes per second download and five megabytes per second upload. Finally in Canada, Toronto to be specific, I was able to get downloads of 19 megabytes per second and uploads of 10 megabytes per second. So you'll note that despite the 
apparent proximity between me and Toronto, uh, there really was uh, a significant slowdown from even Argentina. So I just wanna point out that there's a lot of variables that go into your speeds, uh, depending on the device, where you happen to be located, and where you happen to be trying to access our server on any given day. But generally speaking, I was still able to do most of what I wanted on my iPhone at the speeds available to me. Briefly touching on the plan options for Viper VPN, you are of course gonna get the best deals just depending on your level of commitment. Now, you can get monthly plans, annual plans, even 24 month plans with Viper VPN. Now for a breakdown on the pricing and the details on each one of these, head on over to security.org. Now we've touched upon a number of features for Viper VPN, and you may be getting somewhat of an understanding of it, but we need to see how it actually works uh, in app on the daily. So let's go ahead and dive into the user experience on my iPhone 11. So here we are checking out Viper VPN on my iPhone 11. Now you'll note right off the bat that it says I'm disconnected, uh, it tells me my location, I am in the United States, and it has a country available. Now that was the last country that I actually used um, with my VPN, that's a country I used to live in. Sometimes I have to go back and check what's going on uh, without any geographic restrictions. But let's go ahead and jump into that connection. So I tap on connect, initializing, validating, and voila. Now I'm in Argentina. Ya estoy en Argentina, a ver. Um, you can see that it's telling me how long I've been connected, but that's pretty much it. It's just gonna let you know your server location. Uh, and if I want to disconnect, uh, I could do so. So I can go ahead and tap on disconnect, and now I'm no longer in Argentina. Now, if you note, I can tap on Argentina, and boom, I get all of the various countries available to me. Remember, you've got over 70 countries available with Viper VPN, uh, from Qatar to Slovenia, uh, to various places within the United States. Uh, really useful in that sense. But let's go ahead and just tap on fastest server. Now we're validating. And now I'm just in a different part of the United States. I do not live in the Pacific Northwest, uh, but you know, if I wanna look like I'm a little bit disguised, but not so much in terms of uh, my speed, boom, here I am in the Pacific Northwest. Now I wanna go ahead and jump directly from this to another one, and I'm gonna go look at, uh, let's say Egypt. So I disconnect, and now I'm in Egypt. Now, one thing I like about using uh, Viper VPN and VPNs in general is that they do have you know distinct uh, protocols in some senses, and this is really where Viper has an advantage. Now, if I go into Customize, you can note that I can go ahead and turn on public Wi-Fi protection. So if I do jump on any untrusted Wi-Fi networks, I could stay secured. Uh, that's not something I would like to do. I'm not gonna use any uh, public Wi-Fi. I'm gonna use my uh, phone if, if I have to get online um, outside of my home. But I do have these various protocols. Now I have WireGuard, um, which they consider the most advanced in terms of the cryptography uh, and the connection in terms of speed, uh, security, all of that. Then you have one that we're more familiar with, which is uh, IKE v2, um, which a lot of VPNs use, along with OpenVPN. But what's really interesting for Viper VPN is they have this anti-censorship uh, VPN. It's their own proprietary protocol, um, which is really built to help you bypass uh, geoblocks. So they want to make it so whatever country you happen to be in, maybe the government doesn't want you to be there, well, you can go ahead and uh, not have to worry about it with Chameleon. So Chameleon Anti-Censorship is the name of that particular protocol. Now, if I jump out of that, I can go back, get another look at all of our servers, um, look at the you know connection once again. So you know, pretty basic, straightforward app for Viper VPN, but that's what you want. You wanna know exactly what you're doing at all moments. You wanna know uh, what options you have in terms of protocol, public Wi-Fi protection, and then you just wanna be online and you don't really wanna be thinking about it. So pretty easy, straightforward, experience with the mobile application and Viper VPN. All right, so we've come a long way today in our look at Viper VPN, and I'd like to give you my final thoughts on it as an overall product and service. Now, to begin with, I do like the fact that it has its own proprietary elements. The proprietary protocol, uh, Chameleon for getting past censorship is something I really hope to be using soon uh, and travels around the world. I do like the fact that it does seem to be specifically thinking about those of us who want to be in various places with over 70 countries, 700 servers. That really just allows for us to feel like, hey, I am 
a proper world citizen, uh, at least online. Now, is it perfect? No, uh, it does not have the options that I particularly want as an iPhone user, kill switch or split tunneling. Uh, that's just not available and something uh, that really does uh, somewhat dampen my experience. But generally, it's gonna fulfill the needs for most users and it's a good option for a VPN. All right, that's it. We made it to the end of our look at Viper VPN. And thank you for watching. Thanks for staying with us. And if you appreciate today's video, you know, give us a like, drop us a comment. We'd always love to hear from you. And you know, maybe even subscribe to our channel, security.org, where we're dropping the newest in-home and digital security in terms of reviews, guides, and tips each week. Now, all the relevant links to what we talked about today can be found in the description below. And I once again would like to thank you for watching. My name is Gabe. This is security.org. Be secure.